Um, so then on the other side, what concerns do you have about quantum then at the moment? What sort of is occupying you either in your daily life or big picture? What do you see? What is on your mind or? Uh, we can stop that. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I think they're all going to go roughly under this category. Okay. I think it's something that I think I'm most everyone in here is scientists. It kind of is what unites you know, scientists, right? Skepticism, rather. And yes, yeah, exactly. Society's not prepared. Interesting. Collaborate versus compete. Very topical. Yes. And exactly the scaling bottlenecks and the super expensiveness is what we're going to talk about today, especially. Yeah. Really interesting. And I think also we find that a lot of energy is adding into the hype now increasingly, which just makes it really relevant for us to be here today. Shout out in the room then, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anxious. <laughs> More anxious than hopeful. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hopefully we can change something about that. Oh dear. Hopefully, I think the hope comes with feeling a bit more empowered and actionable, so we can see. And then last on this is, how do you perceive the relevance of sustainability at the moment in the emerging quantum industry? So relevant work there is emerging as well. Amazing, then those are really nice answers. I think we're largely on the same page here, but it's, yeah, exactly. But we can hopefully... The earlier we start thinking about it, the easier we make our lives really in a lot of ways on the sustainability front, but exactly that there's no point having something that is very energy efficient, but doesn't perform. So we need like a minimal viable product before we even care whether it's energy efficient or not really. And then, yeah, so then exactly for the topic of today, how do you feel about the physical resource cost? Where do you see this going in the future? How do you feel about it now? Do you think it's an issue? What, yeah. So I think in general, this is a bit of an issue that there's in general, everything in society, there's not a lot of supply chain transparency. There's not a lot within the company itself. And also just in general on everything on the energy cost of quantum, it's quite speculative. We'd like to be making that more concrete. Yeah, exactly. No one knows enough. Exactly. Then just on these statements and like this is sort of one of the final ones. Be able to slide it across and say how strongly you agree with each of the statements. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if there's if you feel sort of niche about it, that would put you somewhere in the middle. But exactly there should be just in general, the question is at any point. So exactly the way we can talk about computational advantage, that it's not going to be that quantum computers have a computational advantage across the board. But we're working towards it in like some key areas. Again, the same for the energy side, that the, you would be able to run, say, some simulations for less energy on a quantum computer than on a classic computer. We think that's very a very realistic scenario. Yeah. Okay. So, in general, most people are feeling like future technology does play an important role and that we don't have the uh, solution to me. And that no one really feels that quantum is currently adding to the climate crisis in any sense. And probably likely that a uh, computer has some sort of energy advantage. And <laughs> that, interesting. So, not a lot of people, everyone's still skeptical about the climate friendly applications. Is that then? Okay. But that also kind of counteracts that quantum is currently worsening. I guess the currently, is that where people change? That overall you think it's going to worsen the climate crisis? Because either you offset the application, offset the emissions, or yeah, what do you think? Interesting. <laughs> and then, okay, the climate crisis is interesting too.
then final question, just what are you hoping to get from today? Just to make sure that we hit everything that people are hoping to get out of today and we can circle back to some points. Thanks. Like it, okay. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Brilliant. Yeah, it's kind of an issue in general that there's so much um, focus on the computing when a lot of other content tech is much more mature. But yes. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Then good vibes all around. Exactly. Just first, a thank you to Adesh, who's helping, and Johannes, who's also helping, but is joining remotely today by helping this whole um, reality today. So, this is we're hosting from Push Quantum. I think most of you here will know Push Quantum already. Um, Marco, perhaps slightly less, but so we're a, I think it should be a student led organization. So we've been found a few years ago, um, but sort of slowly, my more sort of like concretizing ourselves. So exactly. Um, we kind of define ourselves by putting on events by the community for the community. So a lot of this is tailored for students because that's who we're made up of. And so things like company visits around Munich for like different quantum startups or like lab tours and then different like community events to sort of strengthen and learn from each other exactly. And just sort of uniting in our enthusiasm for quantum. Um, so exactly. And then exchange programs. For, so far we've had in Zurich and hackathons and courses like the Quantum Entrepreneurship Lab. And so everything so far really has been off our own backs and out of our own members' pockets. But we're finally getting to the point that we can accept sponsorship and that's really helping us grow and put on a lot of cooler events. Um, so if you are interested in sponsoring, I have to say, like you can have the partners department in control of this and heading this. And for any collaborations you'd like to sort of on. So basically it's all about students taking their own initiative on the events they'd like to see. <laughs> okay, so perfect. So in general, then I joined Push Quantum a while back to look at the sustainability of it. So that for me was just uniting two topics that I was most interested in. And so for me, the way I'm saying this is this three pillar approach that one for sustain for quantum to not worsen the climate crisis overall, once it's fully mature, once it's reached its sort of point, I think basically you need to minimize its footprint um and have applications that sort of offset that in the end and I think a lot of that then does come down to sort of increasing the awareness and bringing it on the agenda so those are sort of the three pillars of it and obviously today we're talking here about the footprint and so how I find how I feel about this at the moment is that the community is still small enough that we can actually all sort of get together and we can talk about this and we have this sort of group dynamic still that we can all unite and care about one thing and be on the same page about something and exactly, and so we can kind of, now is the time to be doing this. And we can, at the very least, whether however skeptical we are about quantum, we can sort of show how the development of a technology should look. And we can maybe serve as some sort of blueprint. And so one, so some of the topics that we're doing is with like Lisa and Daniel here, and Harris himself, um, for essentially sort of consulting type projects with quantum startups around Munich and especially. And so this is taken from one with uh, Munich Quantum Instruments. So Sven should be joining us later today, I think. Um, and so exactly this is how we're kind of seeing this. And you can see that this is sort of the wider picture for looking at the sustainability of the company. And so things like having the employees on board is something more Harris is looking at. And then having this uh, sort of the energy efficiency and everything we're talking today kind of embedded in the sort of larger life cycle analysis. And one of the things then is key for this is being able to show that their technology is more efficient than their competitors. And so for that, we're kind of using this kind of transparency in their benchmarks. Um, and so then for today, just shortly, so obviously you should all have a schedule. Is this kind of broken down into more about quantum energy initiative from Marco and Rob now, and then sort of about the, yeah, the high performance computing, how it embeds in a larger picture, and then going right down to basics for the fundamental quantum operations. And so we just want to say big, big thank you to everyone who supported us being here today. So obviously the quantum energy initiative we're a partner with, and we want to just sort of raise awareness for everything they're doing. And they're the like overarching body here that's coordinating it and calling for more research in this field. And then 
the Munich Quantum Valley and can thank Tanku for being able to sponsor us today. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, so basically the outcome of this should be moving towards creating an actual roadmap such that we can realize and adopt a benchmark of energy efficiency, as you say, for all quantum tech as well. And so we should hear more about this now from Rob. Yeah, I guess, Rob, would you like to start sharing your screen?